So we're here under the Discovery 3, and you can see there the worn center prop shaft bearing. Clearly visible that that center prop shaft bearing can become delaminated away from its housing. So let's crack on and get this removed. Front of the prop shaft here, where it joins onto the transfer box, this is held on with six E12 Torx bolts, okay? So what we need to do is go around and break them all off by hand. At the rear of the vehicle, they are E14 Torx bolts, okay? Four of them. These are quite tight. So just slacking off all of those front ones up to the rear. Now I was using a long extension but it was too tight so I've had to drop down to a smaller extension so we gain a little bit more turning power creating us some more torque so we can get some power into undoing those okay. So you want to crack all of those off. The top left hand side is a little bit tight to get to just because I'm doing the vehicle on run ups okay so I'm unable to turn the prop shaft. If you've got the vehicle jacked you would be able to spin the wheel okay. Um, we're just going to paint that prop shaft now using, you could even use the wife's nail paint, something just to mark it so we can put it back in the same orientation as we took it off. These prop shafts are balanced, okay, so they must go back the same way they come off. It's quite important, this. Also, just good workshop practice to mark anything you're taking off. So all the front ones that are left in loosely now, I can just undo them by hand for, so we're ready to take the prop shaft out. You can just see I've marked the front prop shaft as well. So that front, front coupling's marked up to the uh, transfer box. Little wriggle, and there she is away from that transfer box, okay. I did undo the 213s as well, which you didn't see in picture, I'm afraid, sorry about that. Now I decided to take this to my friend's workshop so, so we could show you how to do the center coupling, okay. A lot more light, it was inside, in the dry, and it was better for me to film in there. So you just see me unclipping a plastic tie there on the uh, dust boot cover here, which covers that centre coupling. So I've undone that, and now we need to tap off the coupling cover, okay? So it's like a drive shaft boot cover, but this is metal, like a tin. So, so what you need to do is get a hammer and chisel, Preferably a copper hide hammer. You don't really want to be using steel on steel. Okay. So these can be quite tight. You just want to take your time and just ease all the way around, knocking it off. You don't want to damage it. You just want to gently ease that away. Okay. It's sometimes held on with some sealant. Someone's put on in the previous repair, or there is a little O-ring in there that goes all the way around, which... Uh, can hold that in place so you can just see it's just started to separate on me there so just persevere and keep tapping it off now once you pull that back you're going to be greeted with a load of grease inside so you can see all the grease in there and we need to get this part off so we can gain access to the circlip snap ring okay to uh, separate this prop shaft so with all that grease in place, it's a little bit difficult to see, so I want to get a brake dish underneath that now so I can wash it out and get some of that mucky grease out so we can see what we're doing and I can show you guys. So I'm just washing this out with brake cleaner. Okay. And you can just about see the splines in view now. Get some rag in there. Mind your fingers on that metal. Now 
Now you can just see, make out there the gold part of the snap ring, just in view. So before we separate this, I want to mark it. So we're going to center punch. I'm going to do both methods. I'm going to center punch and use a bit of paint because I like to always be uh, double check everything I do and I like to make sure we're fully prepared. So by doing it with the center punch and paint, you know, we've double proofed ourselves. Just in case the paint rubs off, that center punch mark's not going to rub away. Hard to see the center punch mark there on the camera, so I'm going to give it another tap, hopefully, so you can see it better. Very important, you see, that we get this back in the right place because those splines, you only need to be one or two splines out and you can give yourself some nasty vibrations, okay? This prop shaft is balanced, remember. So you can see the mark there and the other center punch mark there. So they're directly opposite each other. So we know we can put that back in exactly the same place. Here I am with the white tip X pen, just marking it. It's a lot easier to see this, but it's nice knowing we got the center punch marks there just in case for any reason that was to come off. So as you can see here, Mark is just spreading the uh, snap ring that sits in a little groove and you need to open this snap ring up. Okay, so the flat nose uh, applies, open it up and you can just pull that joint back now and that will come away. So you can see I've just pushed it in again slightly. Uh, Mark's just pulled it open and you can slide it off. Now here where I've slid it off, it's exposed some more spline. So I want to put run a little bit more paint down there so I can just get that mark perfectly in place. Now you can just see the groove there that groove is where the snap ring was seated. Okay, so that was what's keeping all this together. So now we can just slide this uh, joint off the shaft, put that prop shaft to one side, we don't need that at the moment. Now we need to do is pull that dust boot off. This is what we knocked off with the hammer and chisel earlier and had the little plastic tie in place. Now what we're left with is that bearing stuck in place. Sometimes these bearings can be a pain and you need to angle grind them off. Because I'm in the workshop and I've got access to one, I'm going to be using a bearing puller. Now these nowadays are pretty cheap to buy. You can probably rent them from some tool high companies. Uh, very handy to have anyway for various different jobs. It's nice, easy, clean and tidy. Um, no need to have a power cable for an angle grinder. I'm not saying that you you always get it off with one of these, but definitely worth using one of these if you have the option to. It takes a couple of minutes to set up, just threading the bolts in. So I've just got the, the two little couplings behind the bearing here. So I'm just making sure that they're tight up against it. And you see the big long threaded rod, that's what we're gonna be turning against to pull this bearing off. So here we are, turning on the threaded rod, that's then resting against the shaft, and we're now pulling that bearing off. It's very simple and easy to pull away. Just keep th turning that threaded rod, and there you go, that bearing's almost off now. And there she is, bearing is off. So we can get the puller out of the way, and now what we want to do is we want to clean up that shaft for the new one. So using a little bit of emery cloth, here we are, we're gonna clean that shaft, make sure there's no burrs, make sure we get all the surface corrosion off. We want a nice smooth, uh, even um, piece of metal here to slide the new one in place. So I like to use a bit of clean engine oil just to, to act as a bit of lubrication for sliding on the new bearing. I'm going to slide a bit on the shaft and a little bit on the inside race of that centre bearing for the prop shaft. Just to help glide, to ease that in place really. Create less friction. So I'm just putting it into place and I want to find something that we can slide over the the spline shaft to drive this bearing back in place. 
But there's something I want to show you first of all. Now this is very important. You want to knock on the inner race, okay? That silver circle in the middle, that's your inner bearing race. Always knock on that, never the outside. You will damage your bearing otherwise. Always knock on the inside, whether you're using a drift and a hammer to put it in place, or whether you've got something round and circular which fits that precisely. Here, we're lucky enough to have a bit of um, axle tubing, axle stand tubing that we can knock on. And you can see a few hits and that's back in place easily now. So with that back in place, it's a case of reassembly in reverse order. So we go back on with the center coupling dust boot cover. Now here with the other part of the dry shaft, you can see that coupling there. We need to add some more grease to this, some nice clean grease. So get your grease in there. A CV grease or a lithium grease is what you need. There's our white paint mark and also our center punch. We want to get that perfectly in alignment. Now with that perfectly aligned, all you need to do is give her a good push on and that snap ring will go back in place. Now once that snap ring's back in place, I'm going to push it in and give it a pull out just to make sure it has snapped in and I can't pull it apart. That way I know it's fully in engaged. There you go, that's correct. So now all we need to do is knock that dust boot cover back on because that's the part we took off with the hammer and chisel. So now we need to knock it back into place. I have put a bead of silicone sealant on the inside, just a small one. We want to stop any water ingress there. So we're just gonna tap it on both sides just to get it started and then go round in a circular motion all the way round, just giving it a tap on. Once it's seated back in place, going to go around with a little copper hammer and just tap everything down, make sure it's a nice tight fitment. I want to wipe over it with some brake cleaner now just to degrease it because we want to add another bead of silicone sealant around that seal there. Just again as extra protection to make sure we get no water ingress or any dirt or grime that can get into the, that coupling. So with that on, smoothed out, we can now just leave that for a few minutes to dry. Plastic tie back on the coupling cover there. And all we need to do is I need to take it back and fit it on. So back at home underneath the vehicle, you can see I'm going to start at the rear end of the vehicle and put the prop shaft onto the back rear differential. It's nice if you can have an extra pair of hands here to help you, but there's no need. You can either use a jack or like I'm doing here, I'm resting the other part of the prop shaft on my knee. I'm going to start a bolt by hand just to secure it so I know it's not going to fall off and knock me in the head or fall off and damage the prop shaft in any way. Now it's always best to start these bolts by hand. It's the best to start any bolt by hand. If you can start a bolt by hand and get it in a few turns, you know you're safe and you're not going to cross thread nothing. Starting stuff with a socket and a ratchet or an impact gun, you don't have no feel and then it's too late when you've cross threaded something. So. Best practice, guys, if you can just start it by hand, you're going to save yourself a lot of aggro in the long run. So, cut two 13s to go in the middle. Up to the front, you can see I've got two of the E12s in place. So, we're getting there. Back up to the front, I need to put the remainder of the bolts back in place now. Six up the front here in total. Start these all by hand, the last few give them a few windings, and then I'm gonna use an impact gun just to uh, speed up the process. But what I will always do, I always check everything by hand. I don't rely on the impact gun for doing the final tightness. I like to fill everything by hand to make sure it's all done up correctly. Up to the rear part of the vehicle, and here you're going to see me with the wobble bar. Now this wobble bar are very handy to have. And it's called a wobble bar simply because it's got a bit of a chamfered edge. When you put your socket on, it gives you some movement left or right, side to side. So that gives you a better angle to get, get your socket in place and then move your bar. It gives you better access to uh, get to some of the tight, awkward bolts. So very handy to have in your arsenal. 
well worth every penny buying some wobble bars. So we're going through, tighten them all up by hand, give it a nice check. Up the front, going round, making sure every single bolt's checked by hand. I'm now going to check the two 13mm bolts that I put in earlier. Check them by hand for their final tightness. Now as you can see, left hand one's tight. You've got a sneaky one on the right hand side which is hidden under that cable. That's done by hand. All we need to do is put the heat shield on after this. So there you have it guys. Front coupling to the transfer box. Six E12 bolts, your Torx E12s. Center of the vehicle. That's the bearing that we changed earlier. Two 13 mil bolts, one each side. The bearing, then the coupling joint, that's what we knocked on with the hammer and silicone sealed. So that's all dry and cured off. Moving towards the back of the vehicle and there's our four E14 Torx bolts, all done checked by hand. Hope you found this helpful guys.